Yo, what is up guys? Today we're talking about Destiny 2. Now specifically, we're going to be looking at the Dungeon Prophecy. So, I ended up actually finishing up my solo Flawless not too long ago. And I am still riding that high. So obviously I'm going to be doing a solo Flawless guide. It's honestly probably the hardest thing I did in a while. Only because of a few, like maybe two phases. Everything else is fine. So... First and foremost, the whole thing we're going to be talking about first is preparation. You're going to want to have taken mods and you're going to want to have armor from the last wish because that's how you can put on the taken mods. If you are a solo player, don't worry. You can farm the two chests on all characters. It just means you have to get on the wish wall a lot more. Like what? Six times, I think. If you have someone to anchor you, that's even better. If like... If there's two, like at least if if you bring one friend you can go to the wish wall do the wish go to the chest and then do it on three characters you can do that to increase your chances of getting either armor or the mods and or the mods i should say you're gonna want taken invigoration taken armaments and taken barrier those three are really the ones you want uh if you're a titan that's trying to do this then maybe not taken invigoration but for warlocks especially hunters you're gonna want to take an invigoration so that's pretty much it obviously if you have a whole void armor set that's probably gonna be the best thing for you because i'm gonna be saying a lot of grenade launchers and sniper rifles so that's pretty much it for for specs if you're a hunter you're gonna want high mobility and high recovery that's pretty much it like that's really all you would need for warlocks you're gonna want high recovery obviously and then maybe high grenade for titans you're gonna want high recovery and then maybe high resilience and when i say high i usually mean like a hundred so max actually <clears throat> so the first area if you are new it's basically introducing you to the new area so or the new mechanics so also, you're going to hear a lot of clicking. It's me clicking through the videos that I have. That way I can actually explain to you guys what the fuck I'm talking about. But it's going to be explaining to you like the new mechanic of the game, which is basically or not the game, but the dungeon, which is if you aren't if you are in the dark, then you generate dark modes. If you are in the light, you generate light modes. And the way you generate modes and by themselves is you have to kill a taken knight. So that's pretty much it. Just if you're in the dark. It'll show you on the bottom of the screen like this tendrils of light and dark. If it's light, then you're in the light. If it's in the dark, it's in the dark. It's obvious. It's honestly not that hard. It's really fun. And the whole dungeon, and I mean the whole dungeon revolves around this mechanic. So once you're done with doing that, because you're supposed to collect five, once you collect five, you get into third person and you're holding this big ass moat or mode of light or dark. So once you get that, start running to the pillar of darkness or light and then just explode wherever which one you have. So if you have a dark moat, go explode in the dark pillar and then you're done. So that's pretty much it. It's honestly not that hard. Like if it's hard for you, I, I apologize. But it's for me, in my opinion, it was not hard at all. So <clears throat> once you are done with that. <clears throat> you'll get on to the second phase but i will say if you are someone who's like this is your eighth time and you don't want to do the beginning again you can skip it i'll show you guys how to skip it right now essentially get a sword i would say take have taken armaments on that way you can generate some more sword ammo because i couldn't go up there with the ammo that they gave me once you go up there start for hunters specifically have stompies on and only jump once to get to the to the hole in the wall once you get to the hole in the wall start swiping 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 for a hunter specifically when you start swiping to the air jump and then swipe to to get on get onto the pillar front for warlocks and titans obviously you don't really need to do this if honestly for warlocks go top trees um solar there we go Go top tree solar so that way you can like boop your way up there or just use your super or whatever. It doesn't really matter. For titans, if you can use uh, lion's rampants, if you're having trouble, you can use that. 
and that's it just jump up jump to the other area and then you're good to go pretty much it so the second phase the second phase you're gonna want a few things to keep in mind so for, if you're a hunter you're gonna want taken invigoration and taken barrier so i should actually explain to you what the mods are so taken invigoration means that once you kill a powerful taken enemy your class ability resets which is amazing for taken armaments if you kill someone with a grenade you get heavy if taken barrier is basically if, an, if a taken enemy hits you you get a taken barrier which essentially is like a 20 percent damage reduction it could be more it could be it could totally be more i just don't have it off the top of my head but it's essential it's so important obviously i didn't say this at the beginning but i'll say it now be above 1060 because if you are 1030 trying to do this it's doable i'm not saying it's not just expect you to die a lot especially if you're like a titan or a warlock if you're a hunter i could probably see it because most of the time you're gonna be invisible hunters you're gonna be invisible the whole time most likely for warlocks and titans i do apologize if this guide is not directly aimed at you but i am a hunter main and i did it i did do it on my hunter but relatively i have a relative idea of how i'm gonna do it on my warlock and titan so yeah hunters you're gonna want dan you're gonna want top tree void and 100 mobility maximum and 70 minimum 70 resilient or not resilient uh recovery you're gonna want that because it's important so obviously take an invigoration and take in barrier you're gonna want for 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 warlocks as well you're probably gonna want that as well and then for titans you're probably gonna want taken armaments instead only because i mean sure shield is nice but i've died a few times out of, out of that shield for weapons you can use a variety of things my first time i was using cold denial with my feeding frenzy and multi kill clip roll and then the seventh seraph cqc shotgun for boss damage which i have vorpa weapon on it and lead from gold so i felt really comfortable with it and for other dps for boss i was using anarchy anarchy is really great for boss damage and taking down the knights because essentially you can shoot a knight and then just stay in whatever cover you have to be in if you're light you can go out and go to a specific area where there's cover or if you dark then just go to dark it that's why i like using anarchy that's the that's the setup i was using for that i will say that wither horde with falling guillotine is a really good combination as well and will help you far more because wither horde is going to kill every ad and guillotine you can pretty much just kill a knight almost immediately and for the energy weapon you can use callus muni tool recluse pretty much anything you want <clears throat> and those two I, was, I would probably say those two are the best recommended roles i would say that the weather horde and guillotine method is a little bit more easier especially if you're a titan or warlock you're gonna you're gonna have a lot more easier time than the, the hunter the hunter you're gonna have a little bit more issue because you can't heal yourself you can get you can't have shield so if you're comfortable with being a hunter if you're a hunter main you know how to usually dodge out of shit and you know like what's the maximum things you can take then you do it that's what i did and i had a lot of fun i don't have the footage for it unfortunately but i do have the footage for the shotgun and the anarchy one which is a lot of fun as well i ended up doing that one my first time go and it was not hard at all you're gonna want to do one pillar one light or one dark pillar at a time you can obviously rotate it but i would say kill all the ads first then take take the taken knights out and then don't go immediately to the pillar make sure that you have enough health to like survive the whole thing if you're a titan you can oh no you can't do that well if you're a titan you can probably shield right like right when you explode shield yourself if you're a warlike you can put the the healing well down if you're a hunter just dodge out there's a lot of things you could do but this one was not that hard and i pretty much just explained the whole thing to you yeah just you know once you finish with all the pillars the damage phase is about to happen 
and you'll have like maybe 30 seconds of just you and the boss so start doing all the dps you can if you're a titan bubble would be amazing for this with the sword if you're a warlock healing well would be amazing for the for the boss stamp for the sword hunter you're gonna go at it all solo so what i would do is pop wither horde twice one on the floor and one at the boss and then just go with the sword after 30 seconds or so are up you're gonna see goblins come out kill the goblins as fast as you can because they bubble the the boss so and when i say bubble obviously they give them shield so kill them as fast as you can if you have wither heart obviously you, you can just wither horde that i would end up yeah just doing that honestly if you have the wither horde catalyst it's even better you can pop wither horde at the boss start doing your sword damage and then once you hear it proc pop it at the floor and then switch your sword again it's like almost no brainer so that's what i would do i would do that until like the boss is dead obviously or until you have to start the second phase so if you are for the few people that are using the shotgun and anarchy method i would say if you're a titan or a warlock still do the same thing bubble and and well if you're a hunter i mean honestly you know what to do just go invisible hit him with anarchy and then shock and shock and shock honestly that's pretty much it the only thing i would say is that for titan and warlock it's going to be a little bit more hard because for hunters we can dodge which means we can reload and for hunters specifically you're going to be using the six coyote so we get two dodges and yeah we can reload our shotgun instantly so the sword method's probably going to be easier for both of you guys for hunters you can go either or after you're done with the first boss you will teleport into the desert area which is one of the coolest parts in the dungeon and essentially all you need to do is go to the taken blights and just take them down you have to take three blights down before you get to the next stage i will say you, there's going to be taken thralls taken snipers and a like a variety of taken like it it changes so it's probably going to be like either taking captains taking goblins taking phalanxes it depends which area you're at i can't tell you which one it is but they're all really easy to kill especially the the role i was using i was using a hand cannon with demolitionist so i can get my taken armaments if you're a hunter you're gonna want to put taken armaments anyone actually to put taken armaments for this part i was using so I was using old fashioned with demolitionist and explosive payload or whatever it's called. I was using a sniper rifle. doesn't matter which one, but it, one that hits hard usually. And then Xenophage. So I was using taken armaments, like I said, so I can reload and have my Xenophage on all the time. That way I can take the taken blight out immediately and the special variety of taken enemies that would spawn in there. So. That's pretty much it. After you're done killing a whole area of blights, go to the light bubble thing, and then it'll show you to the next area, and then like rinse and repeat. I will say, be careful. Do not take your sparrow out because there's a lot of taken minotaur that that are just like walking around. If you're not careful, one can literally be right in front of you, stomp, start shooting. You're dead. Be careful. So I would say only use your sparrow if you know there's nothing around you. And even then, I just used it for short, like short distances, not like the whole thing. So after that, yeah, you're pretty much done. I will say, though, there's a secret chest here and I'll show you guys where to get it. So if you guys see this yellow sand, that's where the where the secret chest is. If you guys want to go like immediately, like right when you teleport, I'll show you guys that as well. But ultimately, it's just going to be on the left side, pretty much just keep going keep going left side this is probably one of the easiest ones to get so i would highly suggest you get it so for the third phase you are going to want to probably pray because this shit is actually pretty fucking hard not gonna lie guys this is probably the one that i've been nervous about the most when i first started now it's like i can do it i know i can do it because i've done it already like twice so the weapons you're going to want to use are Izanagi, Recluse, and Line in the Sand. So if you guys don't know what those weapons are, 
is Nagi, obviously Sniper, Recluse, I don't have to explain. And then Line in the Sand is the one I wanted to explain. It's a linear fusion rifle. The reason I use this is so that I can have another ranged weapon, mostly because <sighs> these snipers hurt. So that's what I ended up using for Hunters, obviously 100 mobility and 70 recovery, like I said, with the six Coyote. Obviously, again, dodge is your best friend. You're gonna be invisible the whole time. And before I forget, put on Taken Invigoration. That way you can, you know, have your invisibility all the time, essentially. So you're gonna have two snipers spawn. You're gonna have to kill those almost immediately because they will fuck you up if you're not careful. But the cool thing is they actually are power. They count as powerful enemies. So once you take one out, just dodge out so you can go back into invisibility. And then line your shot up to the next one if you can find it and kill that one your dodge is immediately going to be refilled because you kill him so dodge again that's the great thing i love about this so once you do that once you kill all the knights or once you kill all the goblins start ad clearing that's literally all you're going to want to be doing for titans and warlocks specifically this is where I'm kind of nervous. I don't know how I would do this for my Titan or Warlock. For Warlock, I'd probably be behind, behind cover a lot more. For my Titan, obviously the same thing, but it's just the fact that hunt like Warlocks can obviously heal themselves with Devour or Middle Tree Solar. That's my, my only thing is like, I don't know how I would do this with my Titan. Obviously I would do Bubble, but I just don't know. I, yeah, Titans, if you guys have done this or you know of, of a method, let me know. I would probably use middle, uh, top trees void because it has bubble. You have all your, your melee all the way up so you can have immediate shield and health back up. That's what I would do, man. Like, that's the thing is I just don't know how I would do this part for Titans. But yeah, so hey, let me explain the mechanics before I start. Like, I'm really thinking about it now. So, you're going to see this room where it has, it's basically like a fucking cube or a square. You're going to want to see each of the areas because they're going to have a light. So, once you see that light, like let's say it's on this side. That side has that light on it, which means whatever pillar that has, you're going to have to go to that pillar. So, it's basically just go to that one light. And sometimes the light will go all the way up, which means that you can go any way you want, but you have to get to that one. Once you do that four times, four or six times, I don't remember off the top of my head. Once you do that four or five, four or six times, then you get to the boss fight and you're done. That's really it. Like this boss fight or this area was not like insanely hard. It's just that there's so much going on that you have to make sure that you, you're like always in control of ads because they can spawn in these taken turrets which will fuck you up so that would that's pretty much it like just make sure that your, your ad control is on point like honestly the taken knights should be the least of your worries you should be taking out the taken goblins and the taken acolytes because the taken acolytes are the ones that can spawn in the the taken uh turrets so my best advice would be Make sure you have something that's great for ad control. Recluse probably is not the best thing for ad control. I would probably, like, I, d I honestly don't know. Probably Wither Horde, but then you don't have, you don't have uh, Izanagi, which is what, the reason I used Izanagi is for the last encounter, which the last the last part of this area, like once you're, comp once you're done with the four or six uh, rotations, then you're gonna fight two phalanxes, I think. Let me hold on, let me see the video. You're gonna fight two centurions. And honestly, their health is not that crazy. So you could probably get away with just using Wither Horde and like maybe maybe a sword if you're ballsy. But I ended up using my Izanagi with Line in the Sand, obviously, and it was great. It, it didn't I, I never felt like oh my god i need more damage these bosses are not like designed for like oh okay now it's boss boss time it's more just like a checkpoint you have to like cross so i would just say honestly just make sure your ad control is really good because you have to take down the a bunch of stuff actually you have to take down the taken acolyte so they don't 
spawn in the Taken turrets and the Taken uh, the Taken goblins, so that way they don't sniper you to death. After that, you're pretty much free to kill the knights whenever you want. They the enemies will spawn in like a 30 second rotation, so that's the only thing that's hard. But if you have Wither Hard, you can easily do it. Just shoot wherever they're gonna spawn in, and then just make sure. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Just add control. That's really it. So add control and make sure that you're going to the walls that are lit up so that's pretty much it so once you finish that area you get your box and then you'll go back to the desert you'll see the echo boss like spawn go to the boss uh, don't go directly to the boss but like go like slightly to the boss he'll teleport he'll teleport he'll teleport to like where you have to go and then once you get to the door, you're gonna see this really cool like scene. I love this part. This part's really cool. Get on your sparrow and go all the way in until you see like the outside. Stop. Get out of your sparrow. Do not. You're not gonna want to do that part. So this is the part of the dungeon that pretty much everyone saw. Everyone saw like people on their on their sparrow, which is cool. But you're definitely gonna not gonna want to do that part by yourself. Once you see the outside, go out. I'm obviously I'm gonna show you guys, but. You're gonna wanna do the whole thing by jumping to each uh, each of the floating things. That's what I ended up doing because I was too nervous to get on the ribbons because I did not want to die. For hunters, it's gonna be a little bit more, like it's gonna be a little bit more nervous for you because you feel every jump. So for me, it was like constantly like, oh my God, I can over jump this if I'm not careful and stuff like that. For Titans, use Lion's Rampart, obviously. It's going to be really good for you. If not, it's still doable. Uh, for Warlocks, put Top Tree Solar. You're good to go. Literally, that one, I think that's the one where, like, you're always floating. Even, it, use that one. It's the best one. Obviously, you're going to want a Sniper Rifle and, like, Recluse or something. So, I ended up using or keeping the same rotation I had from the last one. So I still have my Izanagi with line in the sand, obviously, and it's great. Didn't did me well. So I'm going to have the video up of me just like, you know, showing you how to do it. So I will be right back.
Okay, so if you guys want to get the hidden chest, you can do it. It's really simple. Once you get to this area, you're going to see me jump to the ribbon and uh, like avoiding the, the teleport area. Get your sparrow out and then just blast all the way up. If you're losing speed, just blast again and you're there. Like it's really easy. And when I say blast, obviously, I mean like use your, your turbo or whatever. But after that, just follow where I go and then you'll get your chest. So once you get the chest and teleport all the way up, you're going to get to the boss fight. And this one is the one that I'm just a lot more nervous for Titans than I am for our warlocks and hunters specifically hunters hunters can easily do this so the first time i ended up doing this i ended up using wither horde with recluse and another weapon i'm trying to remember what other weapon it was oh linear sand or line in the sand yeah i ended up using that for the first time and if you do end up using that, I will tell you it's the safest option for when you're fighting everything, but not boss damage. It's pretty, pretty pathetic for boss damage. The optimal thing you could do is mountaintop with energy, obviously. That's going to be the most optimal damage you're going to be doing. I ended up almost three phasing that guy. And yeah, it's pretty, pretty dope, pretty dope. So. Let's explain a few things. Uh, hunters, you're gonna want obviously the same thing I've been saying all the video, but you're gonna wanna put on the Taken. It's either or actually. You can put on. No, no, it's not. Never mind. Let me shut up. Taken Invigoration and Taken Barrier. Obviously, you should never have taken Taken bar Barrier out. Never. But Taken Invigoration is probably gonna be the best one for Hunters and Warlocks. For Titans, you're probably still gonna wanna use Taken Armaments. But. For hunters, you're going to be invisible the whole time. It's literally the same thing. Uh, hunters, like, you guys probably already know, but take in. So let's let's talk about the boss fight itself before I start explaining everything else. So you're going to have, once you start the mechanic, go back to where the, the stairs were. You're going to have a group of take in scions spawn in. Kill the scions. Fuck everything else. Kill the scions first. Because if you guys don't know, taking scions can actually like uh, multiply. So if there's just one, it could multiply into 20. So kill them as fast as you can. I would highly suggest just fucking killing them as fast as you can. Because that's literally what's going to save your life. Because once you kill the taken scions, it's pretty easy. It's just three taken uh, knights that you have to deal with. Now, when I say easy, it is more simple. It's... They could still fuck you up. Specifically, if you have a, a taken knight behind you and you start jumping, he will kill you. He will kill you immediately. <laughs> so be careful. That was something that I had to like really like hit myself over the head with because I had a bad tendency of if there was a taken knight behind me, I would jump trying to like dodge him. But they shoot too fast. So his weapon is almost hit scan at that point. So I would say just be super careful if you're a hunter and there's one behind you, just go invisible immediately and go right through him because he's going to kind of like wig out. So once you take out all the scions and you start with the with the taken knights, you're going to see pillars on each three, three sides. You're going to want to take one side as fast as you can. So obviously, if you have mountaintop, kill everything with mountaintop mountaintop is really fucking good like honestly realistically once you see the taken scions come out hit it with one one of them and go to the other groups and start hitting them that's what i ended up using and again like i said if you have void uh void armor on then this essentially means that you have all of the benefits of ta of, of grenades or grenade launchers so you have faster reload, more ammo, uh, more ammo pickup, stuff like that. So that's why I said if you have void armor, you're going to want it. I will say this is more of a general rule for me. I never use 
I never use mountaintop on the floor unless I know that everything's dead because I'm just paranoid. So once you take one area, that's the safe area that you can go there. If you're getting murked, go there. If you just want one safe space, because that's the safe space that you have. So I would suggest get one space and then just stay there and then just rinse and repeat. Really? That's pretty much it. That's, that is the part, that is the part that like would give me the most stress because everything's shooting you from each side if you're a titan or warlock specifically if you're a warlock make sure you have grenade up all the time so i would say instead of recluse go for something that has demolitionist because that way you can get your grenade up all the time unless you have grenade at 100 then ignore that but obviously you have to keep uh devour up as much as you can so you can get your health all the way up all the time for titans this is where i would just i don't know I would probably still say bubble bubble would probably still be the best one only because your melee can get you shield back. That's the only thing though, is that you have to make sure that the enemy is like one melee hit to death. So yeah, obviously with taken barrier, it'll, it'll probably be more easy, but it'll probably be easier, but hunters, uh, Titans. I'm sorry. I just, I just don't know how you would do this. If, if I ended up doing this on my Titan, I'll probably make another video specifically for just Titans, but that's, that's a big if. So once you get all the areas done, you could actually stay in the, in the area because Scions will keep spawning. So if you need ammo, you can definitely just stay there and just keep them spawning in. So that way you can get more art for more weapon or ammo. I should say that's what I ended up doing my first run. Cause I didn't have enough, uh, enough anarchy ammo and i just i wanted more anarchy ammo because i'm like dude i need to have more anarchy but i got impatient and i just went in so after that this is probably where you're probably going to be more disappointed than anything else because you're not going to go for boss damage not immediately so when you spawn into the boss fight you're immediate if you're a titan bubble if you're a warlock super if because well, you have you have a taken the void bomb thing if you're a hunter you're gonna want to use your tether mostly because this is like the prime boss damage phase i think the last part's actually more prime because there's nothing that's gonna spawn in ever but it does have um less time so that's why i guess people say it's the prime time so once the once the taken goblins come out that's when you're immediately detached like okay i'm done doing boss boss damage i need to take care of these guys because the goblins will fuck you up if you're not careful so i would say if you have anarchy just hit him a few times with anarchy when you know that he's he doesn't have any anarchy shots in him and then just take down the goblins all of the goblins i'm talking all of the goblins that come out and even the goblins all the way at the end i actually ended up ignoring the boss fight after he teleported the first time obviously aside from getting the the anarchy shots but after that i was literally just kidding goblins because they are sometimes the ones that made me die the most so after that after the last goblin was dead that's pretty much it i'm literally boss damaging now this is probably why i like it more because if you get it down you can get him at the second to last stage and that's where you can start doing dps that's why i like this part a little bit more so if you guys are following this thing i would say bubble right now tether right now and then do your super right now because you have a lot more time in my opinion because all of this is literally boss damage time nothing's gonna come so me personally i would do that there i just didn't do it because i was like i don't want to try any new st strats right now because i have everything down so once the boss is done once he starts teleporting out, I would say put at least two more in him before he leaves because he still takes damage once like he's out. So after that, that's pretty much it. Each each map is different, but the same. It's literally just control the ads and make sure that once you take down a side, you take down the ogre because I did not for I forgot to mention that there's an ogre that spawns in. So if you have anarchy shots, obviously use your anarchy. 
and that's pretty much it like rinse and repeat go to the boss rinse and repeat and after a while you should be able to take them down thankfully i was able to take them down and it's probably one of my probably one of the hardest things i've done in a while i do apologize that the, this video is long but this dungeon's pretty long it's surprisingly long so yeah let me know what you guys think in the comments below about the dungeon itself did you guys solo flawlessly yet let me know in the comments below if you guys want to follow me on my social media outlets links are in the description below thank you everyone for the constant support i really do appreciate it and i believe in you guys you guys can do this it, i am not some sort of pve god i am not fucking esoteric dog I promise you i am not <laughs> so if i can do it you can do it just do it just do it man it's this emblem is cool, guy. Oh my god, I love it. So yeah, I will see you guys later.